Welcome to another Fix It with Kronk. I know it's been a while, but uh, my wife came home with this vintage fan and the wiring was cut off, so she asked me to rewire it. So um, what I've done here is I have taken off these two little, there's two little screws holding this cover on. Then I used a screwdriver and popped off the knob. So that's what I've done so far. And what I'm doing now is I'm taking off the nut around the switch. So I want to see what's inside, see how we can clean it up, see if this motor is still even working before we connect a new wire to it, clean up the blade and see what we can go from there. So, stay tuned. Okay, the, uh, the unit does come apart. See, all they did was cut off the, the wire. So, I don't even know if this thing works or not. It may just be that the plastic coating on the wire was um, cracked, and they just said, well, let's just pitch it. A lot of times these old motors just will last forever, so obviously uh, it's got some corrosion on it and whatnot, but uh, we want to see if it'll work. So what we're going to do is we're going to try some, um, try a new wire just to see if we can get the motor to turn, and then we'll continue our project. One thing you always want to be careful of before you start disassembling is because here we have two black wires. Basically, it's lamp cord. But we have one connecting to where a white comes in. And one connecting to the uh, slide-on connector here. So we want to want to look at very carefully at the wire. And you'll see... That the wire coming in that goes to this white appears to be smooth, fairly smooth. But the one that came in going to the switch kind of has these ribs on it. So when you wire your new wire in, you want to be sure to follow the same um, orientation for your new piece of wire. Okay, so I got it all disconnected. I have this uh, uh, appliance cord that I had salvaged from a, a piece that, or uh, an appliance that we couldn't get rid of, or that we couldn't repair. I saved the cord, so it's in good shape. But you'll notice that the outside of the cord has a ribbed side and a smooth side. So you want to be sure to hook them up the same way as they came off. So you want to use a wire stripper and you want to strip the ends off the wires. And the smooth wire with the um, white is the way it came off. So we're going to hook it back at the same way. And what you do is you twist these wires together and then put a cap on it. And you put, a, put the cap on counter, or excuse me, clockwise. Put the cap on clockwise. You twist the wires clockwise so that when the nut goes on, they uh, hold tightly together. So first you twist it like this. Then you twist the cap on like that. And you give it a little tug, make sure that it's still solid. Um, one thing I forgot to do was put the grommet on. Here's the grommet that will go into the housing here. So we have to untwist that and feed it through the grommet. Now I have a set of these terminal ends, and what you got to do is you got to take the uh, one that you cut off, and you got to match um, match the size that you need with the same type, so that it can slide on. I think it's going to be a red one. No, this works as you just slide this onto the twisted wire and then you use your crimper to crimp the wire connector on the end. 
If you can, you want to be sure to see the copper of the wire coming up through the fitting like that. So you put your crimper on and then you crimp it. Now the red ones are 14 to 16, so you want to use the jaws that are marked 14 to 16 on your crimper so that you don't overdo it. Let me give it a little tug and make sure it's nice and secure and then pop it right back on that terminal. And what we're going to do is while it's all open, and of course you want to avoid touching any of these uh, contacts, we're going to plug it in and we're going to try it. Okay, it's plugged in. Let's see what happens. Well, the fan seems to work. So it must have just been the wire. This particular model also has a feature of swiveling. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see if that works or not. Obviously, this is an older fan, doesn't have a guard all the way around it, so certainly this would just be for antique or vintage uh, up on a high shelf out of the way of children or something, animals, pets, anything like that, that you would uh, just want to have it for air movement up high. Okay, so we are going to repaint this, the original color. We got some paint at a local box store, and we're going to take this apart um, so that each component can be painted separately. And prior to painting, we're going to wipe them all down, get any dirt off, uh, and we're going to lightly sand them with some uh 220 or 320 grit sanding paper just sandpaper to just uh, lighten things up so here we go so here I've got the housing and the uh, base all washed sanded wiped down and I'm going to give them a primer coat before doing the um, doing the top coat. Okay, what we're going to do to paint the motor housing is we'll wipe this all down. We're not going to disassemble it. We're going to mask off the things that we don't want painted, and we're going to paint the rest. Now, since the back part of it, this part is going to be underneath the, that dome-shaped cover that we took off, we're not going to paint that at all. We'll just mask all of this, which will make it a lot easier. And then we'll also have to put something in these slots to keep paint from going inside the, uh, the motor itself. So I'm cutting up some packing peanuts um, that you can buy, uh, but you could use any kind of foam here. Um, just cutting up something to fit into the slots of the back of the motor so that the uh, paint doesn't go into the motor itself. We got the motor all sealed up and the wires and the back of it all taped up and this can go for its uh, priming as well. So I set up a little paint spray area in my workshop and I got the primer on it and we'll uh, let it dry and we'll go from there. Okay, what I'm doing here is uh, using a steel wool and some hot water and soap and cleaning the gunk off of the fan. And then once we do that, we'll dry it off and we'll put a coat of clear uh, lacquer on the metal to keep that from, uh, keep the corrosion from happening again. Okay, uh, first coat of the color. This closely matches the original color, although it's a slightly more blue. I think the original was more of a teal color. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so I took the uh, I took the paper out of these vents, and some of them still have the primer showing. So I sprayed some spray paint into this cup, and I'm going to use a Q-tip to touch up the spots that still need some paint. 
Okay, so here we are back, uh, back with Fix It with Kronk, and um, the uh, touch up paint has dried, and I think we're ready to start putting this bad boy together. So we're just going to take it, uh, we're just going to put it back together the same way we took it apart. And probably not going to show all of this on camera. And here we are, finished product. And it seems to be working. Looks good. Thanks for watching another Fix It with Crunk. Please like and subscribe.